He's very dehydrated. I don't know what's going on with him. I'm just a little bit worried that there is that blood and his breathing is rapid. A critically ill kangaroo infant has Andrew and the young Joey's rescuer worried for its life. Batari could just die. How many? Eight? Eight. We're going to need a bigger crate. Hi, guys. Dr. Romy has her hands full with eight lively puppies. Sorry, I'm just... <laughs> it's a bit slippery, guys. Chaos. Complete chaos. But will they get a clean bill of health? She does seem to have a very small umbilical hernia. It was supposed to be open, but now it should have closed already. Hey guys, feel good? I just really love animals. Hey mate, good boy. And I love the joy they bring to our lives. What we don't want to happen is for the bag to burst on the inside. But first on this episode... The calf basically will drown in all the fluid. So we're going to have to rip that off pretty quickly because I'm a bit worried that it's in there for too long. But the routine birth suddenly becomes a life and death battle for survival. As soon as I pull the sack off, the biggest challenge is now that the calf is half in, the mum's getting really protective and I could get hurt. Today, we're off to a dairy. The cow we're checking is due to have a 14th calf. So I'm rushing out there now. In the rural Australian town of Ulladulla, Andrew is urgently heading to one of the oldest dairy farms in the district, where a 17-year-old cow has just gone into labor. Being an older cow, we do have to actually worry about a few extra things compared to normal. So she might struggle to actually push the calf out by itself. Hey, Carl. Well, good day, Andrew. How, How are you going? No, thanks for coming out. No worries at all. No, no, What's just, she up to? She's just started having a calf. Yeah. And the feet sort of were there, and then she stood up, and I think the feet have just gone back inside. Carl's family have been on the farm for five generations and have seen thousands of calves born without a vet being present. She lied down and did push a little bit there a minute ago. Okay. He's called Andrew because he's anxious about Atlantis, the oldest cow in his herd. 17 years old. She's 14th done a, calf. 14th calf, <laughs> she's done amazing. it 13 times before, but yeah, sure. there's always that worry now with her age. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Hey Atlantis, how are you? Hello. Carl loves every one of his cows, but Atlantis definitely holds a special place in his heart. He's super concerned about her. Getting older every year, the complications definitely grow. So if Atlantis struggles to push the calf out, we will have to intervene. Pretty sure it was the, it was the front feet. Was the Hopefully. Front feet. Yeah. Haven't seen the head at all though. No, 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 it's only just the feet at this okay. stage. Yep, sure. This is her 14th calf. Done it a few times before. Yeah. She'll be right. Have the other 13 gone all right, or have you had to pull them out? Haven't had to pull any of them, Andrew. She's been no problem at all. Her whole life, she's been no problem. We've never had a cow had 14 calves on our property before. We've been here doing this all our lives. Amazing cow. The milk that she's produced in a lifetime, over 160,000 litres. That is very rare. And just been a magnificent cow. Over 17 years, she would have seen it all here. She's seen floods, fires, drought. She's been seen through it, it all. all. Yeah. She has. Pandemic, even. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Yeah. When Atlantis lies down, it's a sign her new baby is about to arrive. Because she's just gone down, hopefully she'll start to push a little bit harder now. Yep. Once the bag bursts, the calf has to start breathing its own oxygen. So what we don't want to happen is for the bag to burst on the inside and for the calf to be stuck in there for too long. Then what happens, the calf basically will drown in all the fluid. Yep. Hi. How you going? How are you? Very yeah, good, Matt. Back at the clinic, Cocker Spaniel lover Matt has arrived with some special little passengers that are about to make Dr. Romy's day. How many? Eight? Eight. Oh, oh my right. God, they're so cute. We're gonna need a bigger crate. I got one. <laughs> Perfect, I'm just gonna go for backup. Oh my God, they're the cutest. 
babies I've ever seen. Ash, yes. can you help me with the puppies? There's eight beautiful Cocker Spaniels, oh God, yes. but it's just too much for one person. Okay, yes, 100%, I'll follow you. Thank you. Oh my God, oh, look at that one. Oh my God, which one of you will be coming home with me? Cocker Spaniels are the best, especially when they're puppies. And Nurse Ash loves puppies, so there's a chance that Ash is going to be very distracted. Oh my God. Oh God, it's so Matt has brought in the litter of three boys and five girls to be vaccinated and microchipped. These pups are seven weeks old. I love Cocker Spaniels because of their temperament. Number one, they're just the best dog for people, for all ages, for kids. Just terrific temperament animal. Now we can set the puppies free. Not only happy with that. <laughs> but despite their winning personalities, they are still puppies. Oh, hang on. Hi guys. I'm gonna take you all home. Chaos, complete chaos. Yeah, as expected. They've got no names yet, because I know which ones are which. Okay, so I will get you to help me with identifying them and then we'll yeah. do everything. All right. So it looks like a chaotic day ahead of naming, hugging, vaccinating, microchipping and cleaning up after eight forces of nature. Sorry, I'm just It's a bit slippery, you guys. Hang on. Still in the same position with the feed out, but yep. she's not making that much progress at this stage. So we'll just keep an eye on her because I'm a bit worried that it's in there for too long. Andrew is now getting anxious about how long it's taking Atlantis to give birth. She's starting to push it. Bag hasn't burst yet. No, we'll just hang in there for a few more yep. minutes. The perfect scenario is for Atlantis to pass the calf out naturally. Ideally, the both front legs and the head will all come out at the same time like this. That gives us the narrowest area for it to come out the pelvis and cause the least problems in pushing. As Atlantis starts to push more forcefully... Yeah, no, it's hopefully she'll have a good push now. Yeah, we want her out quick. Yeah. Her new calf begins to enter the world. It appears they're the front feet at the moment. There is no way of telling though, so we could still have problems. What we don't want is for a breech birth where the feet are coming up the wrong way. The main concern is with her age. If she gets too tired during this process, the whole thing can stop and then we're in all sorts of trouble. The bag has just burst and the feet are sticking out, but it's covering the calf's nose. Suddenly, there's another major issue. Andrew must intervene immediately or the calf could die. I don't want that calf to drown, so we're going to have to rip that off pretty quickly. If we don't get that sack off the head, that calf will suffocate. Andrew needs to get that sack off its nose so it can breathe. Andrew has managed to rip the sack off. The calf is now breathing by itself. As soon as I pull the sack off, I can see the head. So that's a really good sign that the calf is coming out the right way. But the chest of the calf is squashed in Atlantis's pelvis and it can actually get squashed in there. The biggest challenge is now that the calf is half in, the mum's getting really protective and I could get hurt. The calf looks alive and the tongue is moving around a little bit, but we just need to get it out as quickly as possible. Carl jumps in to distract the protective mum oh, as Andrew helps Atlantis bring her new baby into the world. I'll try and just pull it out yeah. a little bit. Hopefully we'll have a new little one very soon. I'm just going to grab onto the legs and see if we can try and give it a bit of a pull. Oh girl, it's all right sweetie. Andrew needs to be hands on now quickly help the calf be born out of the cow. Atlantis is a pretty tall cow, so there's a big drop here. I'm just going to try and steady the calf out. Calves are really sturdy, but I want to make sure it gets a gentle start to life. And I don't want that calf to hit its head on the way down. Yeah, mate. Good. There's a bit of a head shake, so it looks like we're alive. 
computer garden. There you are, mate. Good girl, Len. She did well. She did well. Here's your new baby. We'll just try and get the breathing a bit better. Well done. Oh, what a result. We've got the calf born and very active calf too. We'll just give them a few minutes alone because that first couple of minutes is really important bonding time. Dr. Andrew did a fantastic job. He's jumped in, he's got the sack off the calf. That calf could have suffocated there. Then he's helped with the birthing of the calf and without landing on the ground, he held it and placed on the ground, did a great job. It looked nice and bright actually, Carl. It is very nice and bright. It's a very yeah. healthy young calf actually. Yeah, for sure. Mm. What have we got? It's a girl. Oh, tops. <laughs> Good job, Mum. Atlantis is a great mum. She's protective, she's cleaning the calf up, and they're really bonding straight away. I think Carl's really happy. Atlantis is his favourite cow, and we've got a great result today. <laughs> Thanks for jumping in, Carl. She was getting a bit protective there. You can see oh. she didn't want me around too much, but yeah. No, well, I'm happy to help. We're all here to help. Yeah, we've got a good result in the end. Oh, it's a great result, yeah. She's a pretty special cow, isn't she? She is, Andrew, a great cow. And after a few shaky moments finding her feet. Good girl, you can do this. Atlantis's baby number 14 looks set to grow up to be just as special as her legendary mum. This is Blaze, male white Blaze. Romy is doing a general health check on the first of eight Cocker Spaniel puppies Matt has brought in. No color. To be vaccinated and microchipped. So now we're just checking for hernias, umbilical yep. hernias. Oh, hi. <laughs> so we have to check Blaze over. So we start from the head, the face, all the way to the rest of the body. So we're checking eyes, ears. He's up the man. So no pernias, which is good. So now we're just gonna listen to his heart. So we need to make sure they're in good health before we vaccinate. We check their heart rates, we check their temperature, we make sure they're okay before because they need to be healthy to be able to produce immunity against these viruses that we're vaccinating. 38.2, perfectly normal for a dog. Cool. Are we ready for your first vax? Hold your breath, mate. Sometimes they can squeal. squeal. Yeah, yeah. I don't if know. anyone Blaze was... looks super tough, so no, I don't no. know if that will if be happening. If I have to lay money down, <laughs> he will be the only one that squeals. Ash is relishing the task of keeping the seven-week-old calm while he receives his jab. Oh, look at you, little no, boy. Squeal, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Done. Microchip to go, though. Microchip, Microchip is a bit one. of a bigger needle. Yeah. Ready? Oh, oh no, there you go. Oh, done. That's it. What a good boy, Blaze. Perfect. It matches our records with so many dogs. We need to make sure we don't get them confused. That's right. First one down. Cool. Now we're looking for Rudolph. Rudolph. He's that's, got a red nose. Yes, that's oh, one with a pink nose. nose. And he's got Should no, be easy to find. He's got no collar on. But mischievous Rudolph is playing hard to get. You're not Rudolph. Rudolph. Uh, uh, not Rudolph. Rudolph. Where are you? It's okay, mate. Come on. Arriving at the hospital, wildlife carer Pam has brought in a rescued baby kangaroo that needs urgent help. Good boy, good boy. Poor little man, he's pretty sick at the moment. Pam hopes vet Andrew can save the youngster who was found at a caravan park alone and barely able to move. They'd seen this little Joey wandering around on its own without its mother. 
So I went down and it looks like it's been without its mother for a while. He's very emaciated and is also very dehydrated. Hello, little one. <laughs> Just Come wondering if you could check out this little guy for oh, me. Oh, yeah, sure. Come on through. All right, then. Thank you. The town is surrounded by lots of natural bush, and that's why we see the huge range of native and wild animals as we see every day. A little boy, Pam? Yeah, so um, oh, hello. Got, him, got him yesterday from the campground. A member of public said he'd been there for a little while. They'd observed him. Has he got a name? Um, his Ruth. name's Vitari. Oh, cool. Hello. And he's developed diarrhoea. Okay. And I pulled a tick off him this morning. Paralysis tick? Yeah. Grey sort of colour? Yeah. He's also very dehydrated, so I did give him fluids yesterday. Okay. Perked up Until, a little bit? Yeah, but he's still not right. I don't know what's I'm going on sure. with him. It's a pretty I, bad I, smell, you notice, as yeah, well as I know. more I, than normal. Joey's of this age uh, reliant on their mothers for their milk. Normally he would just be at that stage where he's hopping in and out of the pouch. He could just be very weak from, from that. I'm just hoping he'll pull through. How old do you reckon he is? Probably about 10 months. A little blood around the actual yeah, gum line. Yeah, and I don't know what that's that? about no, either. No, sure. Yeah. The teeth are intact. They don't look chipped or anything like that. Yeah. But I'm just a little bit worried that there is that blood. He's a bit docile, isn't he? Very flat. Yeah, yeah I think sure. he's very flat. We'll find a comfy spot there. Okay, mate. His breathing is a little bit yes. rapid. A bit more effort to breathe yes. than it should be. Yeah, definitely. And that could be an infection. A bit worried about pneumonia or yeah. that he could have aspirated something. Yeah. Aspirations okay. where there's fluid that goes down into yeah. the lungs and we end up with that gurgly sort of breathing. Yeah. You can see he's not that comfortable in that position. No. So, yeah, I think there really could be something going on yeah. with his lungs. Okay. Puzzled as to exactly why Vitari is so ill, Looks pretty swollen down here and a bit inflamed because he has been trying to poo a fair bit over the last little yeah. while. Okay. Andrew fears diarrhoea could have seriously dehydrated the young Joey and might even be endangering his life. Uh, just want to help him, don't you? Uh, yeah. yeah. He's being very brave, Pam, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> I think what we should do today would be to give him some fluids right. and yeah. we should concentrate on his hydration yep. and the infection Definitely. and then we'll get him, yeah. get him strong again as soon yeah. as we can. Yeah. Rolls. Where are you? <laughs> Ash and Romy are frantically searching for their second puppy patient, who seems to be hiding. No, not Rudolph. No good. So the puppies have now decided to snooze. Cannot blame them, but they're all hiding in the corner, so now we have to go looking for them. Oh, okay, I think she's hiding there behind the pot plant. Oh, I found Rudolph, the red nose. Oh, oh, we got him. That's him. Hi. Your turn. Hi, Bobby. Oh, hi. Shake. <laughs> checking Rudolph, making sure everything's okay. So we check his ears, his eyes, his bite. What do you got? So that canine is a bit narrow in space. So see how it's actually poking oh, yeah, there? Right. Canines are supposed to grow in an angle, mm -hmm. and that one's growing just with a narrow angle. Mm -hmm. And that what can happen is that it's just poking mm -hmm. the roof of the mouth, and that can be, that can be a little bit annoying for them. The dental defect will need treatment before Rudolph gets much older. What we might have to do is to remove this one so it doesn't cause him any pain or discomfort. All right, whatever's got to be done. We're a little bit concerned, but it's only his baby teeth. Ideally, we'll remove them. And then once we get the adult ones come through, then it's, again, we need to reassess it and see if the angle's correct then. Now we're ready to vaccinate and microchip. Here it comes, I'll just Mike. get um, Ash to hold them. Rudolph passes the rest of his health check with flying colours. Oh, oh. Double. oh double. The final item on the checklist is how much this little man weighs. How big are you? We measure all the puppies' weights just for us to track their growth, essentially. So it's 2.46. Rudolph can now relax as Ash, Romy and Matt move on to the last of the three boys who they decide to name Floyd. Are we looking for the one with the little... He'll no have markings. no markings on him, he'll be a straight gold. 
without a collar male. Where can we find him? Oh. Is he there? Hey, 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 look here. Look there here. he is. Oh, hang on. It's going to be a very long day if all eight shy puppies continue to play hide and seek. There we go. Thank you. I knew he was here. He has got a bit of a crackle in his chest, which suggests a bit of pneumonia happening. Nearby at the clinic, gravely ill kangaroo infant Vitari is about to start treatment for a range of problems. The dehydration level is pretty poor, so we need to get him some fluids into him as soon as we can, and importantly, we need to get antibiotics into him to try and counter this infection that is developing in his chest. Wildlife carer Pam has serious doubts the joey she rescued will survive. I hope he'll make it, but the way he looks at the moment, I'm not very happy. Come on, mate. Come on in. We'll just go through to that table, just straight ahead on the blue towel, if that's okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Andrew's first priority is to treat the dehydration caused by the young Roo's diarrhoea and the absence of his mother's milk. So I've just given Vitari about 150 mils of fluids, Pam, All right. and it just yep. sits under the skin and will be absorbed yep. over the next little while yep. and hopefully give him that little bit of a pickup. Okay, good boy. Next, the struggling baby Roo is given medication to combat his chest infection and possible pneumonia. This is the antibiotic injection for okay. Vitari. Yep. We're just going is to it pop intramuscular? It. it is intramuscular, so oh, we're just going to use this big muscle up here. Oh, hang on to him. <laughs> Hopefully he won't feel it too much. We'll be gentle. It's okay, mate. Good boy. He's being very brave. There you go, Good mate. Boy. Good boy. Good That'll boy. fix you up. Good boy. Hey, okay. It's a long-acting one, Pam. And hopefully give him that little bit of a pickup pretty quickly. Okay. Good job. I think he has perked up a little bit. <laughs> I think the best thing now is if we take him up to the sanctuary. Okay. So if you get going, and yep. I'll meet you up there. All right, excellent. Thank you very much for your help. Okay. Andrew needs to run more tests. Because Pam volunteers at a kangaroo rehab center with its own medical clinic, they decide to continue the young Joey's treatment there. It's okay, mate. Come on. Good boy. Despite a slight improvement, little Vitari's condition is still critical. We've had a kangaroo or a joey that's been fine and then they just start to get worse and worse. And then it'll be dead. All right, soon, thank you, I'll see you no up worries, here. I'll see you up okay, here. Okay, bye. Thanks, Trevor. How are you going? Yeah, yeah mate. thanks. Poor man. Oh, I don't know that you're going to eat it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no? No, thanks. Not sure? <laughs> It's been fun and games as Romy and Nurse Ash work their way through vaccinating and microchipping eight Cocker Spaniel puppies. Sorry, puppy. I know. Not too. I know. It wasn't that bad, was it? It's not that easy when you have eight pups running around. There's a lot of squats and finding them and jumping and running around, so that will be a bit of a workout. Perfect, all normal, we're ready to mm -hmm. vaccinate. All clear of Floyd, great health. The last male Floyd is fit and well. Next one is our first female Maya, she is adorable. So this is their first vaccination, they still have two to go. They're going to be every four weeks. So we usually vaccinate puppies at eight weeks, 12 weeks and 16 weeks. And it's very important because we need puppies to be protected against these awful infectious diseases. The parvovirus, canine hepatitis, and the stemper virus. Hey Maya. She does seem to have a very small umbilical hernia. It was supposed to be open when they were inside their mums, but now it should have closed already. So it's just a small little defect that we can fix at the same time that we dissex her. Who's next on the list? What do we got? Gold, no white, pink collar. Hey Mabel. 
with the eight-week-old babies settling down for their afternoon nap. We'll have a look at you. Ash and Romy treat Mabel and her sisters as quickly as possible. Beautiful teeth. Eventually, all five girls receive a clean bill of health. Do I need another one to join my family? Of course you do. Okay. Ash and Romy are finding it hard to hand back the adorable pups. Oh my god, you're the cutest thing. They just look at you with their deep, dark eyes, oh, just look at you, don't they? Yeah, they're like just looking into just my look soul. Stop it, Mabel. Stop it. it. He's a cocker spaniel puppy. You always find that when you come here, they just run around with them and play with them and show each other, and um, they all seem to think they want one or need one. I'll take Mabel home. I don't think my other dog would like that. Hey, Mabel, would you like a Yorkshire Terrier to be your big brother? But Romy's dog, Pote, already has a special place in her heart, as well as on her feet. I'll get him on my socks, so he's always with me. I can get you Cocker Spaniel socks. A Cocker Spaniel yeah, socks? Yeah. Uh, probably could, could... not. <laughs> Are you sure? Because I can organise that. Yeah, I'll bet you could. Thank you. <laughs> okay. My partner got them done for me for Christmas and the best present I've ever got. I need my little soulmate with me at all times, so I get to have him in my socks. With the health checks, vaccines and microchipping done, it's time for the adorable eight to go home, before Romy and Ash change their mind about taking one home. Let's take them up. All loaded. It's been a big day for the puppies. It's their first experience at the vet. There's a lot going on, a lot of smells, noises, new people. It can be really stressful, but we try to make it a positive experience as much as we can for both us and the dogs. Make sure we have them all here. Yes. Bye. This is definitely the best part of our job. Bye, puppies. See you in a few weeks. All right, all done. <laughs> See you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's okay, mate. Come on. Good boy. Andrew and wildlife volunteer Pam are about to arrive at a wildlife sanctuary to conduct tests on seriously ill youngster Vitari. Little Joey's like Vitari are pretty fragile, so I am concerned about his chance of a recovery. Good day, Adrena. Hi, Yeah, very well. This is a great Hi. setup. How are you going? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> nice and new. It's all new, it's awesome. Got another patient for you. <laughs> so this is little Vitari, and Pam brought him in to me to just give him the initial check over. Okay. I decided to do the tests up here to involve Adrena. She's the owner of the sanctuary and the main person that will be looking after him. We just wanted to rush him up here as quickly as mm. we could for a bit more care. So a little bit diarrhea. Yeah. Yeah. That's swollen too. Yeah. yeah. We just want to do a blood test and make sure that he's not anemic. Okay. And we'll take it from there. All right. Are you right to hold him for I me, can. please, Adrena? Sensing Vitari is becoming stressed, Adrena puts the young Roo into a sack to simulate the safe feeling of being inside his mother's pouch. Because he's so small, we're going to use the jugular vein in the neck. So I'll clip a little bit of hair away from there. Sorry, mate. Good boy. With their fragile patient now calmer, Andrew begins the process of taking a blood sample for testing. Thank you very much. If you can just hold that off there for a moment, thank you. Firstly, I'm going to check for anemia. We want to make sure he has enough blood going through his system to carry the oxygen to make him nice and strong. I'll take little Vitari, if you don't mind running those tests. Then I'm going to take some faeces from him as well and have a look under the microscope for worm eggs or particularly for a parasite. So I'm happy that he's made it up here sound. Um, he still looks pretty flat though, so that is a big concern. The red blood cell count is complete. This is the check for anemia for Vitari and his blood counts are around the 40% mark, which is normal. So Vitari is not anemic at all, which is great news. With that box ticked, Andrew tests the ailing young kangaroo's blood for a low sugar count and diabetes. Be 
countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the blood glucose is 4.5, which is smack bang in the middle of what we would like. So that's great. So he's not suffering from hypoglycemia yeah. nor diabetes. He is still a sick little boy though. Do you want the total that he's yeah. had? Little mate, it's okay. Andrew now fears Vitari is infested with a deadly parasite that kills many kangaroos in the wild. Adrena is taking a poo sample and we're going to check for both worm eggs or coccidia. Coccidia are little organisms that really do affect a lot of wildlife and coccidiosis can be really, really dangerous. Vitari could just get weaker and weaker and actually die. Looks pretty messy down there. So we're going to have a look under the microscope to see what the faecal test's showing. Andrew is examining a sample of young Joey Vitari's poo to see if he's infested with a parasite that's often fatal to Australian wildlife. Coccidia spread really rapidly between roos. It basically is spread from one roo eating the poo of another roo. I think I've found what Vitari's problem is. We actually have coccidiosis. There are heaps of coccidia so we can see on the screen here, these are the actual coccidia organisms, yeah. and we really shouldn't have that many at all. The coccidia are everywhere. They cause a lot of inflammation to the gut lining, and that irritation is what causes both the diarrhea and the dehydration. The good news is now we know what it is, and it is actually quite treatable. I've got some good news and bad news for you, mister. You do have coccidia, but you've got people that love you and care for you, Watched by Adrena and Pam, the 10-month-old receives antiparasitic medication. I'm just going to give you this Vitari. This will make you feel a bit better. Doesn't taste very good though, does it? Hey, you're all right. Down the hatch. There you go. Good boy. Yum, yum. He's going to go into his own little cot. Sure. That's uh, away from the other Joeys so that basically he's in quarantine and he um, can't pass on anything to anything else. All the volunteers here are going to love him to bits. You stay there and get well, little man. You're going to be very well looked after. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. No You're welcome, <laughs> little man. <laughs> Back at the clinic, Andrew has returned from the kangaroo sanctuary for a very special occasion. So today is Andrew's birthday and we always um, like to celebrate. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! What happened to the candles? He loves it. He secretly pretends that he doesn't like it, but we know that he just loves every moment of it. Woo! <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday from Thank all of us. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. This year I am 21 yet again. 21 for the third time. Woo! Cake now? Yes, yes. Let's go! go <laughs> the birthday cake has been a tradition since I started over 20 years ago here. Something I really enjoyed and it's something that I really wanted to continue. Smash one. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Happy birthday to me. As a team, we recently wrote our practice values together. We came up with respect, commitment and making a difference, not only to the patients, but also to their owners and ourselves. Underpinning all of that, we definitely love to have fun. Oh, oh. Jesus God. While Vitari is still in a bad way, it's hoped with more treatment and plenty of rest, the little Roo will make a full recovery. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.